Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to Better Together. When you know better, you get better. That is what we try to do here every single day. And I believe we succeed. Do we not, guys? I think we do, too. <laughs> Definitely. 100%. It is Wednesday, December 9th, 2020. We will get to the year in a moment because there was a little controversy this morning over what year it was. We'll get to that. <laughs> Our quote of the day, the measure of intelligence is the ability to change. That is Albert Einstein. Did you guys pick that because of The Bachelorette last night? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Bennett talking about emotional uh, intelligence. intelligence. <laughs> oh, I can't. I can't with Bennett. I, I have him. to say it was uh, it was a wonderful escape. I did not think we were going to get to watch any of it last night, but Kelsey and I did get to um, actually eat and watch it and have a little escape. But um, that's thanks to our new friends at 24 Hour Home Care who have got my mom covered with her at-home care. You know, when you have somebody coming home, which by the way, let's break the news now, my mom is coming home tonight. Yay! I, I know. know that. I know. Which is very exciting. But at the same time, right, you almost don't have time to focus on the excitement because there's so much work to do to yeah. get ready. And mind you, we were, are, in a renovation. <laughs> We were renovating and making a wheelchair accessible first floor bedroom for her. And Kevin was in there probably till past midnight painting and getting things finalized. And, you know, the house is a big dust mop. And so we're trying to like clean and I'm using like scrapers on things to get like paint off that, you know, has dripped down on the toilet seats and things. It's it's kind of a shit show. There's a lot going on. And poor Kevin is now trying to move things that my mom and dad had at the other house um, that they were living in while they were renovating over to here. And we got into maybe our first fight since this renovation, like our first real fight. Um, so I think we're doing good if we've been in renovating renovations for half the year and we just got into our first fight now under all this pressure. But um, I agree, Maria. I mean, I have to jump in because I remember you telling me that – when you're in a renovation and she, you, you told me a couple months ago, you're like, just you wait. This is the only time that I've ever thought, huh, I'm questioning my marriage is in a, <laughs> is in a renovation. So you yep. guys have done well. Yeah. Yeah. We've done well. So we fought this morning, but it's because he's going to move all this stuff with his pickup truck. Right. And PS the, the back door thing, that lift thing broke. So now he has to lift it over that stuff. And then there's me who's like, well, you're going to move my bed first because I don't want to cross contaminate stuff. Now the windows have been open in that house, in the guest house they were staying in. I can't imagine that there's any contamination level at this point, but still I want to be safe. Mm -hmm. And yeah. So the truth is I think <clears throat> house projects are the thing. Well, if anything was going to test a marriage, Maria, you have two in-laws, sorry, two parents in the hospital with COVID you're doing a renovation, you're live. I mean, like, it's only reasonable that you guys would be experiencing some tension right now. And, um, oh, and we know. have a German shepherd that wants to eat everybody. So like containing yeah. him is a challenge. And then he's, I mean, Kevin is literally a hero. He's been feeding new cats that we got all the dogs, taking care of them, running a massive renovation, like GCing the whole thing. Um, and, you know, it's down to him. Everybody's sick. Everybody's gone. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so um, it's uh, it's been crazy. So I was in there cleaning my mom's bathroom to get that prepped and cleaning the kitchen so that that was kind of ready for um, actual use because it hasn't been in use in months. And uh, And then, yeah, getting discharging a patient like my mom right now who has stage four brain cancer, who is now, you know, bedridden and all that is really, really complicated. And, um, I was kind of, you know, freaked out about being able to accomplish everything I needed to by tonight when she's discharged. And then also she still has to stay quarantined, right? Cause she's not out of the window yet. And, um, you know, hopefully my dad will follow her you know, in the next coming days. And so he'll have to be quarantined. So now you got to quarantine them and, um, you got to figure out tw she needs 24 hour care, um, at the moment. Um, and so you got to find a company that you feel like can handle that and that you trust. And so 
I've had calls with the owner, Ryan. I've had calls with um, everyone there. The entire staff has been amazing. And so um, we enlisted their help yesterday. And so I know that with 24-hour home care, my mom is going to be covered and we can safely get her here. And then, um, and then I'm dealing with like the Medicare rep. There's a lot to all of this. So the Medicare rep was amazing yesterday. She's like, we send, we'll send supplies. We'll send a rehab nurse. Um, and then um, there's like a bunch of other stuff that they do. Like they will come, I think, twice a week. And they do some things like, listen, the services are, are limited that they provide. And I've talked about this on the show before. Um, and maybe Ryan from 24 hour home care will be my partner in crime on this, but I really want to figure out a way where we can get insurances to cover, um, caretaking. Mm -hmm. It's, um, it's going to become a crisis with, uh, Alzheimer's and Dr. Keith Black and I have talked about that at length before, and they used to have insurance for this that you could pay, right? Like I would think ahead. I'm a think aheader. I would pay extra to know that if something happened to me, I would be taken care of in the way I want to be taken care of at home, in the comfort of my home. Um, so I think that has been my like kind of side mission to figure out. And I've had conversations with different insurance agencies and and you know, I've I've started on it, but um you know, there's so many missions to have, but I think this is a really big one. And, you know, obviously going through it with my mom and we've had, um, caretakers at home for her, gosh, probably this whole last year. Well, at least a year. Yeah. Because when she, when the tumor came back last September, she went paralyzed after her medications. And so it was, it was a challenge and we needed help. So, um, so yeah, getting everything ready, and, you know, like I have to kind of set up the room to know that I can't be there anymore. <laughs> mm. Like you're setting it up and then you're going. And now it's up to the caretakers who are coming in and out. Um, and, you know, and I think I'm going to need Stephanie's help to read the CDC guidelines so I can understand. She was sending me stuff yesterday. Yeah. She's like, the best. <laughs> Kevin was like going to bring over. We have these like material chairs. And we have some of them here that never got moved over to the other house while they were living over there. And I said, leave the chairs. I don't know how to sterilize them. And if they need to be sterilized, maybe they just need to be outside for a while. I don't know. I'm like a glass table I know I can sterilize and, and clean with alcohol and, and every other product under the sun. But um, I need help kind of figuring that part out. But um, for now, I know she's coming home and she's going to be in safe hands. And that's the biggest part of all of this. Um, and, um, you know, like I said, in coming episodes, I need just a minute. Mm -hmm. Um, I will detail with you guys exactly, um, what you can do if you're in a similar situation. I mean, COVID is unfortunately, um, running rampant right now. And I think it's going to be a tough winter for us. So, um, I will detail everything that we've done and everything that you can do and how you can advocate for them. And even little things like Kelsey and I spent, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half, just Christmas caroling to my mom. Oh. You know, you got to keep the brain going. And it was really important to me that we didn't lose her and have her fade away because she was, you know, in a hospital and, um, and she was in two hospitals and so um, the second hospital, there was a lot more engagement um, where people were in her room a lot more. And so, um, and I, you know, had figured out a rhythm with FaceTime and stuff. And so I, um, you know, I've played Gregorian chants, like I've told you, Kelsey and I were Christmas caroling. I would chart my mom's progress every day by was she answering yes and no questions today? Did we go up a notch? Oh, now she's asking why or who or what. Great progress. Then the next day would be, mom, can you remember this Greek poem? And then she'd say it and it would be like the biggest like victory. We would be cheering and so happy. Um, and I'd be like, mom, do you remember that song we would sing in choir? Do you remember that? I can't remember the second line. What was the second line? And she would sing it. And I'm like, oh, my God, thank you, God. Every day it was like 
challenging her to keep thinking and, and utilizing different parts of her brain and, you know, getting her to wave, getting her to smile. Um, it's what you're uh, doing there, Maria is like when people are in the hospital, their bodies are being fed and taken care of. But what we need to do is feed their souls, right? Mm -hmm. We're more than just a body. We're, we're a heart and a soul. And that's what you're doing, which is, um, I think really, really important. I am really looking forward to in time when you have time to process all of this, you're sort of every girl's guide to dealing with COVID <laughs> parents at the hospital. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, um, I have a lot to share, trust me. Um, and so I think, um, yeah, I mean, even like the medical black book, I have a black book for, um, everything to run kind of our lives. It has not been updated in a while, but I'm going to create now a medical black book just for our family with everything in it. Because when she was initially rushed to the hospital, I was on a plane. I was just landing as it happened. And so they didn't know she was allergic to penicillin. Wow. And they gave her some penicillin. Now she didn't have any effect. You say, I don't know. I wasn't there. I couldn't be there. Um, and I don't think my mom's, I think my mom is allergic to penicillin the way I am. It's just kind of a rash. That's what I remember. Um, but you need to have something accessible, hard copy and digitally at all times so that if you are on a plane <laughs> and your loved one is, uh, falls ill, then you have somebody that can just go right to the book and say, doctors, I can scan this to you, or I can say it to you, whatever. Um, so we'll go over all of that and I'm going to create the book for us and then you'll just fill it in because I'm going to do it for myself anyway. Um, and Maria and yeah. I will Carol to anyone in need mm. and Jeff, that's so, our next goal. So, okay. So Jeff, I had this idea. Um, I, we were caroling for my mom and you could tell she really loved it. And sometimes she would fall asleep and she would come back and, um, she would laugh at us. She laughed. Oh, <laughs> okay. So at one point it was like, I had, um, I don't know what I had, like a cup of we something. We had a metal, like metal water bottle. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> and I'm, I'm doing crazy things like that. And she literally started laughing at us. She was dying. Yeah. Was so awesome. it's good because you get to see she's still there. Now, you know, I know her and I always feel like I have to explain to caretakers or nurses, like my mom is the like humblest, nicest, kindest human ever. And she's really funny. So if you really engage her, she'll get there. She just, you know, she needs a little bit of time. But it's really easy to look at somebody and say, oh, they're asleep. Oh, they don't know what's going on. Oh, whatever. But they do. Yeah. And she does. And so, but we had incredible nurses that really went the extra mile. And I always say, like, this is like, and I told my parents both, I go, this is how special you guys are. My mom's nurse, um, Chris was so incredible that he was the start of her like real turnaround, right? He moved her into the, um, they have like these uh, hospital bed chair things. And so he's like, let's get her in that and let's get her kind of like, you know, moving again a little. And he was doing like a little physical therapy with her. And that's when she started engaging and talking. And he was very loving and very warm. And my mom's going to respond to that. And so, um, he had his first day off and God only knows how long. And, um, I had sent him my mom's cookbook that we did together. The ever girl's guide to cooking. And he made a recipe out of it for her for dinner. He made her like the Greek lasagna. No way. You didn't know this? I didn't know this. He made it for her and, and brought it in on his day off. Okay. He spent his birthday with my mom and literally the mm. next day, he went and did this. And I was like, I mean, it's, it's wow, unbelievable. And that's, I mean, gosh, I can't Let's say send enough. that to uh, Michelle Figueroa. Good news Monday. If that's a good news story, if I've ever heard one, that's oh, beautiful. That's true. And guess what? She hated it. So now she's like kind of coming out of the cognitive fog. So now she knows good food from bad food. <laughs> So she didn't want the hospital food that night. She wanted his. And then the next day she had leftovers. <laughs> That's so, um, and then my dad, you know, he has his nurse, Nicole, who was like, I love your dad so much. He's so sweet. And she's like, I hope I get him again tomorrow. And I was like, oh. I mean, that's who my parents are. 
right? And um, and so I'm I'm really grateful, obviously, to everybody who's been helping them, and I'm grateful to all of the angels that are coming and helping. Um, and I can't remember the woman's name from um, Medicare right now. I think it was Kate, um, but. And we'll probably have her on the show too, because it's really hard when you're in that kind of 911 moment of like, to understand insurance. I, I think it's like, again, that's like instructions to me. It's just a blur. And she made it so easy for me yesterday. She's like, no, listen, this is what we do. This is what we're going to do. I'm here. You can call me 24 seven. And I'm like, okay, this is amazing. Thank you. Maria is sitting in the office going, you're an angel. You're <laughs> a literal angel oh. because I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot. And you're not used to that, especially with insurance companies and dealing with that. It's usually they just want to pass you on, pass you along. Like mm -hmm. she was awesome, at least from what I could hear. Yeah, you could hear her yeah. too. Um, so anyway, I so ask Maria. Yeah. I, I just would have to imagine emotionally this would be complicated. And I know <laughs> you barely even have time to feel right now because you're so in soldier workman mm -hmm. mode. But like your mom's coming home and you won't be able to hug her. You'll have to quarantine her. I mean, like, yeah, I'd have to imagine it's a complicated cocktail of feelings for you right now. Yeah, I just am happy she's coming home because mm -hmm. almost two weeks ago we thought we were done. You know, all you hear with COVID is if you're immune compromised, like you're you're kind of a goner or you're you know, it's really, really bad. And so that's my, that was my only kind of vision of what happens. That's why we work so hard to protect them and keep them safe. Um, and you know, I, I don't know if I got to talk about this in the other episode, but the blame game is nothing I'm interested in. And I think that that's something that we all need to talk about is the blame game, because the first thing everybody wanted to know was who did it? Like, it was like clue the game who done it. Um, and I know that we're all being very careful. Um, but we have to realize that life is still going on, right? We're not all fully quarantined in our homes and never leaving. We're going to the supermarket. We can get it there. We're still going to doctor's appointments. We can get it there. There's things that have to happen and that, you know, we have no control over. So yeah, you're interested in knowing and, and, you know, it is unfortunate that it had to happen. Um, but good thing, bad thing, who knows now we don't have to worry anymore. I talked to her doctor yesterday and he's like, yeah, it's like rare, rare, like zero chances that they'll get it again. And I'm like, oh, so we don't have to stress anymore. <laughs> good thing, bad thing, who knows? Um, and so, uh, yeah, I think, you know, I, I think that's a, an important message that I've wanted to share with people. Listen, there are people who are reckless and careless, and that's um, that's a different story. But if people were being careful and it just happened, um, I think that we have to have some um, empathy because that person is going to feel such incredible guilt. And I know that the person that, um, you know, I know that person feels horrible and I don't want them to because it could have been any of us, right? Um, my dad had to go to the dentist. He couldn't chew. He couldn't eat till he could hurt. He had to go. You never know where it comes from. So, um, that is, uh, that is one other message I wanted to get across today along with it is almost Christmas guys. Thank God. <laughs> it is, um, almost Christmas. It's December 9th. And like I said, I'm just happy my mom is coming home and I believe my dad will be home soon. And, um, and so I want to quickly get this house in order and get some decorations up and make it feel Christmassy yes. so we can enjoy it. Um, and I will say, um, we are going to do everything we can to have a great Christmas. And, um, my Duncan, my Duncan friends are helping me along with my festive cup. Um, they've got new snowflake sprinkled donuts, uh, new signature gingerbread ice lattes, peppermint mocha lattes, like all the Christmassy things that you want that make you feel like, okay, it's the holidays. Like, okay. It's real. Yeah. Like we haven't felt the holidays yet really because we're like, ah, life or death, but, um, they have, um, a chai oat milk latte 
that is to die for. Um, I love chai lattes. Oat milk is not my best friend sometimes, but sparingly I can have it. Um, and it's quite delicious. Um, so I think, uh, I think between my cheers and cup and my regular appearance there in, you know, the, the guy at the counter, I forget his name. He was like Albert. He, um, he has like his little Christmas necklace on. It makes me so happy. And I'm going to pull mine out. I've got like the light up Christmas lights ones because I always do. Oh, cupcakes and cocktails. We can't really do it technically, but I could still do a little version of it. I always have the best cupcakes and cocktails party. And me and my friend Spot make the most insane cupcakes. They were incredible. I was there last year. It Maybe was... we do a donuts and coffee party. <laughs> oh, that would be fun. A donuts and coffee party is way easier because I can just go to Dunkin'. I can get everything. They've got all the, oh my God, we could do like um, chai oat milk lattes, gingerbread lattes. I can get like candy canes and make it all festive and we do the sprinkled donuts and we have it like be pretty and yeah. I'm in. I'm in. I love it. I'm in too. And I just, I love you so right about- Jeff's in from a distance. Um, yeah, exactly. I just love from so much- From a distance. With... Jeff's participating in from my- a distance. Coffee and donuts day. <laughs> even donuts though day. he's oh so far away. Oh, that's good. <laughs> anyway. Um, I love it that you're so right, Maria, that the the holiday drinks make you feel like you're there, you mm -hmm. know? And it, even though it's obviously going to be a different Christmas this year, I've become a Dunkin' Stan through this partnership. And, you know, as Laura and I were doing a little bit of Black Friday shopping online this Saturday, I was like, normally we'd be walking around with our Dunkin' drinks. So yep. I'm going to run to Dunkin' and get us some lattes and we'll drink them while we shop online. And yeah. it feels like you're doing it. And so have like I some so sprinkled agree. donuts so you can like... It feels festive, but I'm going to make a little presentation. I'm going to do coffee and donuts this year. And so people, fun. Stephanie's saying we have to do Instagram live with it. Of course. Uh, duh, yes. Share with you The chat is freaking out. <laughs> what is so it? Excited. The chat is freaking out. Right? That, I love, about by the, the way, I love you guys. Thank you for being with us every day. Um, I will say that uh, we have a lot to do today. So I'm going to kind of wrap it on that. Um, and go start, um, you know, being my, I have to be like, a. you know, back in the day, we Everything. used to call the operator, <laughs> like the what do dispatcher. You call that? A dispatcher. Yeah. Switchboard I'm like the switchboard. Um, I keep doing this. I'm like this. Oh, but I will say, by the way, at the top of the show, let me close on this. This morning I was working so hard in my brain to understand what year it was. So clearly guys, I'm not at my best, right? Like I'm, <laughs> I'm dealing with some hives. And so, but the, the medicine the doctor gave me yesterday, the cream, clobestanol, whatever it is actually is working. Um, so I am dealing with some hives and I definitely am not at my best and I'm definitely not sleeping. Um, but I will be soon. Um, but I didn't know what year it was this morning. <laughs> you guys. Truly, no, like asked, truly no. didn't know. No, she really asked us if it was 2020. And, and we no, were like, I was having this conversation <laughs> with myself when I was getting ready. And I really couldn't understand why I didn't know what year it was. And then I was in here before the show. I said, guys, what year is it? Is it 2020 or 2021? I think it's 2021, right? And I really believed it was 2021, truthfully. And you're like, no, it's 2020. I'm like, it is. And just like, look at your notes. And I'm like, oh, December 9th, 2020. So confused. It's been a year. It was just a funny it's moment. Kelsey year. and I were like, ha ha, Maria. And you're like, I know it's 2021, guys. And we're like, uh, yikes. yeah, Maria, yeah, it's 2020. Yeah, let's just hope this brain stays intact through all of this because that was a little concerning <laughs> well, to me it, this morning. It was a little concerning. Yeah, just a little bit. But anyway, um, my continued thanks to everyone for um, your prayers. Um, like I said, it is a, a, a small miracle to know that my mom is not a small one. It's a big miracle. My mom is coming home tonight. Um, like I said, I won't be able to really be with her, um, because she has to stay quarantined, but she will have her incredible, um, nurses who have devoted themselves to helping COVID patients transition and, uh, be cared for at home through 24 hour home care. So I'm really grateful 
um, to have them in place and know that I can breathe and still continue to get everything done around here because no one's lived here in months. It's been like just a big dust mop. So um, I'm really grateful. 30 seconds before we wrap out, Maria. I just want to read one review from Apple Podcasts. Oh, yeah. Those, How about two? Because you know, I was I'll... reading some of them last night or the night before just to make myself like feel good. A hundred percent. I'll read a couple. And you know, we, those reviews mean so much to us, mm -hmm. not only just personally for our hearts and souls, do they lift our day, but it helps us on Apple podcasts and we are close to a thousand. Oh, and I come know on. I need to get to a thousand. We need to get it. I know. I know that by 2021, 2022, whatever year it is, I know by the end of the year we can get there. So let me read this beautiful review from spring level real quick. She says, this makes life better. It's the kind of podcast where the first show you listen to makes you crave all of them. Maria and her crew are like the friends I'd want to have lunch with every day. We hope you do have lunch with us every day, Spring Level. We love you too. Uh, very mindful. They help me raise my vibration daily, and life has gotten better because of it. The mind-body-spirit connection is the key to a balanced, happy life. What a beautiful review. Wow. Raising vibrations. Wow. I love that. But by the way, guys, are we like friends? Not 100%. like, I mean, like the, the term, us? like, the, I mean, like the cast, like we're our own <gasps> cast of friends. Oh, I love that. Sure. I mean, me and Kelsey do live together now. <laughs> this is true. And I'm totally I, wrong. I told my dad yesterday, I said, we were FaceTiming and I said, um, dad, I don't have a husband anymore. I have a wife now. I go and she treats me really well. I'm like, I think I went the wrong way in life. I'm like, I have such a better deal. I'm kidding. Kevin's amazing. Um, but I say it, he goes, Maria, you got to take care of your wife. And I'm like, I am, I'm trying. I buy her <laughs> gifts. Like I really try hard. She cooks for me. Oh. And um it was really funny but I love um, your dad but yeah we are kind of like our own little cast of friends we are I love it okay Wait. Jeff one more and then Kelsey you I'll get that door more. I did Thank got you. you girl um I love this this is from s dot theo dot 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 and then parentheses long greek name which is funny so it's probably like <laughs> theomopolis or something like that okay. but uh, that we was love from our princess greek diaries listeners. Jeff yes exactly nice. <laughs> you're right that is from princess diaries Hilarious. All right. He says, this is food for the soul. This crew and their approach to healing is food for the soul. I feel a special connection to Maria as the daughter of a Greek immigrant. Um, I very much identify with her relationship with her parents. So thank you, Maria, Kelsey, and Jeff for the wonderful daily inspiration. Oh, gosh. Well, Heal Squad, I love you. If you haven't joined us on Patreon, guys, we are doing amazing healing events over there. We had to cancel it, obviously, with what was happening. But Deirdre Haid is coming up, and she's incredible. And we will get that up very, very soon. So join us. You will have access to the past healing workshops that will help you tremendously, I believe. We have ad-free content over there, extra content. Um, and so please join us. If you haven't subscribed already on YouTube, subscribe. You'll get notifications so you don't miss a great episode. And uh, a shout-out to my friends because... This team works tirelessly every day to bring you this show. Um, they go above and beyond, and they are just as passionate about it as you guys are. And so we are all, all one great team, but Jeff and Kelsey, I love you both. And I'm oh, so too, grateful to we you love both. You. And thank you. Oh, and I have to say, Maria, because this will make you laugh. Michael said, you're Monica and I'm Rachel. So I want to be Rachel. I know, I'm really excited. I don't want to be Monica. <laughs> Says, thank, I would yeah. be thank Monica. you, Michael. I want to be Rachel. You can be Rachel. Fine, I'll be Monica. <laughs> I love Courtney Cox, too. <laughs> I think Kelsey's Phoebe. What? This is my favorite. Oh, my God. Oh, we so love you, Maria. <laughs> Who's Jeff? Have we talked about this before? I'm totally Ross. Ross. And I don't want to be. I want to think I'm Chandler, but You're I'm not. totally Ross. I look like David Schwimmer, too. It's like. Uh, oh, that's so funny. <laughs> like oh, my neurotic, God. You know. I'm crying laughing now. Oh. All right. Love you guys. <laughs> be nice people. Make good choices and be present. We'll see you next week.